you heard of the Nuhugan Island? It is an island paradise located in Kawayan, Negros Occidental, a nesting ground of the Philippine megapode or tabon scrub fowl, sea turtles, and fruit bats. Did you know that it is gifted with rainforests, lagoons, beaches, and gigantic aquatic animals and coral reefs because it remains undisturbed and preserved by the Philippine Reef and Rainforest Conservation Foundation or PRR CFI. They are an NGO that has been protecting the island for almost 29 years. And then 2006, so, we decided to open the Upper Air Cup 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 Air sa island, so ang um, Brahman Dre. So ako, kagawin ka yung mga staff yung katrabaho din. So part of the signature ng library program sa foundation. So alin na kami siya pala sa Barangay Bulata. They are the main bosses that keep the island's ecotourism. So every time you visit the Nuhugan Island, you also contribute to the island's greener goals and support the locals' livelihood. The island is 90% limestone and 10% soil, so that means there is no fresh water on this island. The fresh water has to be transported from the main island, so it is very important to conserve water. Unfortunately, some parts of the island were destroyed by Typhoon Rai, known in the Philippines as Super Typhoon Odette, in December 2021. Most of the cities and municipalities that were hit by the storm were the central and southern Negros. A month after, the Denhugan team surveyed the area and found that corals from north to south, especially the garden corals found on the east of the island, were destroyed. Pero ang tree ya, so grabe man to din may trabali, mga tree. So malangit galing nga kayo dasig yung pagka-recover nila. Pero hote, yung isa sa nga na-apektuhan git, yung legend yung nga kaoy sa Gris Island. So may isang dungon nga ginastaran sa white bellad sea eagle. Ah, okay. So, Isa nisa sa karasun kung naagin baka nisa sa foundation in ng island. So, it's a long story. So, pwede ko na sa istorya karon sa inyo. Hindi siya ang table coral. Wala na na siya. So, naguba na sa sa typhoon ng mga. So, good pero, oh, so that man. So, before, so, pero isa nisa sa naigot sa inyatawag na coral beaching. So, isang last 2020. So, may ara, may ara na nag-declare ang solution na may ara coral beaching na hindi sa solution. So, grabe dito ka ilit dito kayo ang tubig. Tungkol sa sunlight. So, isa nisa sa mga species na naiguan. So, napatay mo na ang suraan. Pero, okay lang tayo. Kaya ara lang iya nga form. Pero, sa nang magdi o death, nakakastag ito. Wash out ito. We went there in June when the lowest temperature is 25 degrees Celsius and the highest is 30. It was a showery month, but luckily we didn't have any rain during our stay. The Nugan Island strictly maintains a limit of visitors, so you will be required to book in advance before visiting the island. See the links in the description to book a date and a price guide as well. But if you went to Koyan without any plans and couldn't enter the Nugan Island because you didn't book in advance, then you can tour the whole municipality using the tricycle drivers or ask any locals. You'd be stunned at how many fine white sand beaches and diving spots they have that have diverse marine wildlife. Suppose you're coming from Bacolod City, ride the bus going to the south and get off in Barangay Bulata, Kawayan. The trip will take about 4-5 to five hours depending on the bus driver's skillfulness. We rode the Sirius Aircon bus from Bacolod City to Kawayan and paid 332 pesos each for adults and 260 for the kids. Four hours later, we got off at Antol hey guys, Car Park. So we're now in Antol. It is a private property exclusive to the Nugan Islands guests where you can leave your vehicle. I actually made an error here because the car park is for guests using private vehicles. For those traveling by bus, you should tell the driver to drop you off at Crossing Ramulus Cuadro de King in Purok 3, Barangay Bulata, and there will be boatmen there to bring you to the island. It was fortunate that there were already boatmen on standby at Antol, and they started the boats to bring us to the island without any drama. And this is where everything started to feel good. The boatman will bring you to the island in about 20 minutes. It's just so near. So in this video, I will show you the features of the Nugan Island and how I'd rate them from my most favorite to the least. Is sustainable tourism suitable for this kind of travel destination? Let's see. The beaches. The Nugan has four beaches. One is Typhoon Beach where we stayed during the night. The second is Turtle Beach. Okay. 
so kinta wag din namang ito ito this month and I still doubt that as mga green card and the box but the box so wala man season pero hindi harap na kaya mong dapat po mga green card para mga green card mga green card wala din sa season mga pusa lang din so basi kung 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 basi Third is the East Beach, which is the, just beside the Moray Lagoon. This is the only beach amongst the four that faces the Negros Island. This is honestly my favorite because the waves were crazy. They kept pushing us to the shore and we went tumbling over. <laughs> Lastly, Tabon Beach. This is named after the Tabon Scrub Fowl or the Philippine Megapode which is normally seen on the Nugan Island. My next favorite, swimming with the back fishes and giant clams. So, so, the Hugan Island, so, we are at some of the local sites. We're going to talk about the special managed area as soon as moving soon, so, how are you doing this? So, first, the right from this area, the Philippines, and the last, and more in the zone. So, we are at some of the buffer zone, and we're going to go. So, pwede na rin kapag isda, pero pwede na so, pwede kagamit siya after beer. Like, pero may fishing, cyanide, and then sa net, so traces na rin. So, kung magkumbuo sa traces, hindi na siya pwede. Yeah. Please, Question don't ito. step on the corals. The corals is animals. Yeah. And then, halong-halong sa mga corals yung pinatapakan na doon. Kaya, yeah. kailangan yung mga corals sa iyo. So, yung nangyari na corals nyo, kaya nabusang mo nang itatawag na fire corals. Kasi, so, kasi, yeah. Yeah. And then, don't catch marine life with these starfish. So, these starfish mga bedmos. So, mga crown of thorn. So, halong-halong get and then... And because of these stringent regulations, marine life is conserved. Coral reefs thrive and fish and other marine animals multiply. Uh, this is my favorite. We swam with a school of bat fishes. They are bigger than my spread hand. We made sure not to swim too close though as not to disturb them and also to avoid the corals. We also saw giant clams and I was in awe looking at an endangered animal right in front of me. Aside from the bat fishes and giant clams, we also found different species of fishes, eels, sea urchins, crabs, and starfishes. They are about 4 to 10 times the size of the average because on the Nugan Island, they are left alone in their natural habitat and it's lovely seeing their large versions there. So surreal. Ram Ram said that June is the season that baby black tip sharks are born, so there is a chance that we we would be able to see them, but lucky for me, we have not seen one. So much more much damo ang karapatay every year ng mga sharky sa mga tao. Best keep distance na lang instead para maka Snorkeling at Twin Peaks. So, who is not able to swim? We are two young people. Okay, but we don't have to worry about it. We don't have to worry about it. We don't have to worry about it. Colorful marine life is plentiful on the Nhugan Island. One of the many diving spots there is called the Twin Peaks. Look, these are not the peaks of the island, okay, above the sea, but they are actually found at the bottom of the sea. These are two coral reefs that are about 50 feet high from the seabed. There are many colorful fishes and starfishes seen in this area. Sadly, I couldn't identify each one. Next, the staff. Wow, who would think that my fourth favorite island experience is not nature, food, or lodging, but the staff. 
Yes, you heard that right. I've been to many places with great staff, but the staff of the Nugan Island is my favorite. They are exceedingly knowledgeable about what they do, very passionate about the environment, and very hospitable people. Filipinos are known to be very warm to their guests, but the Denhugan staff are above the standard Filipino hospitality. I arrived at the wrong wharf, but without any problems, they brought us to the boat and brought us to the island with happy hearts. Upon arriving, they welcomed us with open arms and happy faces. They gave us snacks and showed us our room while we waited for the other guests that we will be with during the tour. They instructed us to be mindful of the Nhugan Island's environment, especially the sea creatures. Bear in mind that the island is not a resort, but a conservation project for future generations. Our visit was not for travel and luxury, but to learn about wildlife and be closer to nature. With these goals, we must follow the regulations of the Nhugan Island. Take nothing but pictures, leave nothing but footprints, kill nothing but time. My kids learned a lot from Ram Ram and the rest of the guides, and I hope they will carry the love for nature until they get old. We snorkeled in the deep blue sea with my partner, big youngster and baby girl, but never have I doubted nor felt any insecurity at all because they are very skilled and watchful of us. Manang Dadai and the rest of the kitchen staff served us plates filled with pagmamahal and delicious healthy food. They made sure we were doing okay and are relishing the experience. They take our photos all the time to make sure we have memories to bring with us when we leave the island. Oh, they're awesome. Everyone was smiling. You can really tell that they love their jobs and are very passionate about them. Next, the grub. From the colorful peachy peachy, less sugar calamansi juice, red rice, ensalada manga and eggplant, kansi, fruits, pancakes, and arrozcado. Oh my god, they served so many delicious negrosan and food. Even as I tried to remember what else they served us, I'm salivating. Manang Dada is absolutely the queen of the kitchen. Also, I noticed that they didn't sell many chips or drinks that use single-use plastics. They served plenty of food on the table instead, so that we would be so full that we wouldn't have space for any more junk food. Now look at that. I just realized they tricked me into eating healthy food and being a responsible tourist. Next, the rooms. So the Mugan Island also has a coconut tent. It's one of the Saka sites. It's one of the typhoon dishes and then Mori Lagoon. So this is the accommodation of Islam, sir. But it's a swimming cabana. So if you go to Piyak, it's open. So if you have any guests, we'll have a mosquito net on the bed. And then the bed. And then the Mori Lagoon. But it's also closed. It's a closed room. It's a closed room. But in this area, this is the Mori Lagoon. So this is the Mori Lagoon. Ano yung isa dito sa Mori Lagoon? So isa nito sa ginagamit man isa sa foundation sa isa sa mga program sa Dres Island sa mga education program sa foundation ng mga marine camp sa mga bata. So nagatinder na dito mga bata within 5 days. So alin isa sa Manila, Cebu, Davao, so yung nakumbay na sa one group na sila. Mga sa schools na sila. Mga schools na sila. We took a private room at Typhoon Beach Camp. It is located in the northern part of the island, facing the west. So every habagat or southwest monsoon, the waves in this part of the island are hugely brought by the wind, especially if there are storms or even merely tropical depressions. So that's why they named it Typhoon Beach Camp. They minimized activities in boat docking in this part during habagat. It's 4,000 PHP per person, less 50% for 7 to 12 years old, and free for 0 to 6 years old. This is a private room that already has toilets and showers. Also included are the guided program tour and boat transfers from the mainland and back. Lunch, dinner, breakfast, and snacks with unlimited coffee and drinking water. They supplied us with clean gears for snorkeling and kayaking, which are also included in the package. Other activities aside from snorkeling and kayaking that are included in this price are skin diving, trekking, bird watching, and learning about wildlife. Now, back to the rooms. Okay, so they hold a very aesthetic interior design. It's so relaxing. They use solar panels, so there are no air-conditioned rooms, only fans, but we slept very well at night. No disturbance at all. No insects and no noise because the walls are thick. We had a very good quality sleep for the next day's activities. I appreciate this because I tend to get cold very fast, and not only that, we're saving energy. Next, kayaking at the lagoons. Mm -hmm. 
If we only had all the time in the world, we would kayak all day because the lagoons are very quiet and the birds singing is so soothing to the ears and soul. It was very meditative. Okay. This is the first lagoon out of the five lagoons of the new gun. Hey, Kuya! Hey, Bobby! Ah, hi! Let's go! Where is Kuya? Don't disturb. Baby. Hey, guys! Look at us! Where's Bobby? Bobby! Show yourself! Yeah, I am ready! <laughs> Ma oh, ano ni ka dalom? Dalom dalom gina de? Ah wala na diya. Oh ikaw dalom na yung apun Mga kanduro, turbo, mga apat na lupa, lima. Dalom yung apun ino. So one thing to note, by limiting the number of guests that visit the island, the travelers will achieve peace in such a place. If they allowed many tourists here at the same time, we wouldn't be able to appreciate the sights and sounds of this place. This is the second lagoon where you will see a unique species of mangroves in Den Hugan because its seeds are round while other mangroves bear pencil-shaped seeds. I'm sorry I forgot the name of the mangrove, so please ID it and comment on the name because that will be very helpful. Thank you. The seeds will ripen and become bigger, and when the right time comes, they will fall to the bed of the lagoon and another mangrove tree will grow. There is another species of mangrove in Den Hugan, which Ram Ram will explain to you. Listen up. Or distance din yun, mga so halong-halong man kita sa ginapamuksi natin yung mga daon, di ba? May mga katitig na tama. So, nangyara sa ginatawag na polsonus, or makadalit din sa inyo. So, yun siya ginatawag na blind mangrove. So, yung tawag niya nga blind mangrove, kaya tungkol tingin yan, natagok din siya. So, once nga mag makadto na sa inyong mata, matalim mm. siya, hindi nga mabulag ka. Yung polsonus, nagalibay po. Or else, yung mga kaon mo siya, or ano, di ba kasami na ito, ginatawag tilawa, tilawa na ito. Oo. Oh, so, matalin siya nga madegit. So, kan ano na siya ang tawag siya? Blind mangrove. So, sa um, local name, Alipata. So, damo na siya sa mga mangrove area. Oh my God, how do I... Okay. So, we are at the third lagoon of the Njugan Island. So, it's very peaceful here. I don't have like a camera holder. So, so what I'm gonna do is, I'm just gonna show you the place. See, it's very peaceful. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Okay. I can just stay here forever. Then Hugan Island contains five lagoons, but we only get to kayak at North Lagoon and Moray Lagoon because the rest are closed for conservation as some of the mangroves are critically endangered. The other lagoons are covered by mangrove forests, so it's also not ideal for kayaking and swimming there because these locations are muddy. You said I can't do it. Oh my god, there's the ice cream. Oh no! So lit, so lit. <laughs> Next, the bats. So, okay, so balik untuk nukit ayam dan kiri mom saya. So, balik 40 per hectare pun saya. And then 1.5 bang labaknya. Kilometer and then 0.5 kan yang kalah parunya. So, kalau mega main lagi dengan ayam. So, pada insya Allah itu menjadi one hour. Seriously, it's only a very small island, 43 hectare. It has rich biodiversity, so the efforts of PRR, CFI are significant in protecting it.
One of the animals found there are bats. Probably about 3,000 bats were there inside the cave. Before Typhoon Ra or Odette landed in the Philippines, there were about 6,000 bats in that cave. It's wild. Next, the boat transfer. I love the boat transfer back and forth because they were short and sweet. There is enough room for me and my family and the boatmen were very helpful. And now, the overall experience. It all began when the previous owner of the island wanted to cut down and sell a hardwood tree to the PRR, CFI. That tree was home to a pair of white-bellied sea eagles. At that time in the early 1970s, the foundation was only renting the island. The foundation said that the tree was very old and could have already lived there even before he became the owner of the island. So, instead of buying the tree, they offered to buy the whole island instead. Unfortunately, the tree was also destroyed by Typhoon Odette. In summary, the activities we did on the first day were snorkeling at the Twin Peaks, bathing at East Beach, having coffee and kayaks at Moray Lagoon, strolling to Tabon Beach, the Bat Cave, and the Second Lagoon, and then Turtle Beach. Then we strolled the beach, stretching to the Typhoon Beach Camp, and marveled at the beautiful sunset. On the second day, we snorkeled with the bat fishes and giant clams and went back to our homes. Of all the travel goals in the Philippines, I'd say that the Nugan Island competes in the top 10 list in my heart, mainly because of the great experiences and sights all packed in one island that I get to enjoy with less impact on the environment. Ecotourism ensures the locals' livelihood, the survival of endemic creatures, and the preservation of our natural resources without sacrificing a favorable experience for the tourists. It's a good feeling to know that the money I spent on this island didn't go to rich businessmen's pockets, but as a contribution to PRR CFI's conservation work for species and habitats in the Nhugan and Southern Negros. The Nhugan Island holds seven viable ecosystems white sand beaches, lagoons, caves, seagrass beds, coral reefs, limestone forests, and mangrove forests. Today, the 26th of July, 2022, we celebrate the International Day for the Conservation of the Mangrove Ecosystem. There are 17 species of mangroves seen on the island, and the mangrove forests play a great role in stabilizing the island's ecosystem and preventing erosion. If you are planning to visit the island, please see the description box below on how to reach the Dunhugan Islands team. I had a significant connection with nature and the Kawayanans. So yes, 4 thumbs up. I hope you enjoyed this video. Please leave a comment below if you had a different or more unique experience in Dunhugan Island. Don't forget to like and subscribe to watch more of our Western Visayas adventures. guys <laughs> morning guys so we're gonna do the snorkeling again sad to say we're not gonna eat them you know the what <laughs> <laughs> morning guys morning guys <laughs> the place is great you know great people great food Great experience. Yeah. Yeah. I will have one on.